just because I haven't written down any notes for this yet. All right, so um, while I'm getting this ready, let me turn on my other machine real quick as well. Um, I wanted to look at, there's some hit and miss topics that um, are random um, that I wanted to go over. Let's see, I think it's, I think it's that one. That, that come along in the file systems, uh, they have to do with file systems. So, and I guess I didn't write it over here, but the, the topic I wanted to talk about was Windows file server. How do I set up Windows as a file server? What if I want to serve Windows uh, uh, files in a Windows domain environment? And uh, I think you guys are, from what I've heard in the Windows server class, I think you do a little bit with this. So we'll do a little bit with it in this class. But one of the primary things I want to do is what if I have a Linux client that wants to connect to my Windows share? So I'm also going to focus on that. So um, let me come back to my, so here I have Windows and why makes this bigger? Which button do you click? Is that this one? one? Yeah. You can go full screen on the top corner. Okay, I just don't know if I want to go full screen. Nice. Um, so what I have done, and, and I don't think there's any uh, value in showing you how to do it, but uh, back on the EC2 console, I added a new, two new volumes to this Windows instance. And so I guess there's lots of different ways of getting to this, but the disk, oh, maybe it's that. Disk management, that might be the first place I would go. So you can see down here, I have volumes D and E that I've added. Um, and that's where they will show up. Now, a couple things that are interesting when I when I plug these in. In fact, let me let me plug in another one just so we can <coughs> work through that and make sure that we know what's going on. So this guy is in US East 1E. So let me create another volume that's also in that same. So I'll do a two gig in US East 1E. We've done that a lot. So not a big deal. Uh, refresh this. I think it's that one. So I will attach it to, oops, to my Windows server. Great. And then we'll switch back here. And I don't know, is there a refresh? I'm not, I'm not great with Windows. I know I'm not. I used to spend a ton of time in Windows, but I'll rescan this. Maybe that's it. So I can find my way around, but it probably changed a lot since Windows 2008 or 2005. <laughs> um, is this it? Maybe you know. There might not be much adopted yet. Does it take a while for that to happen? It seems like it will have to do it. Anyway. Um, I guess. The I think it was here. Oh, there it is. Thank you. That helps. So first off, uh, it, <coughs> whenever you plug them in, they say the disk shows up as offline because that's been set as an administrator. So you can right click and you can put it online. And then you need to initialize the disk. And when you initialize the disk, this goes through and either sets it up as an MBR or GPT. Okay. So which one do we want to do? GPT. GPT. Oh, okay. GPT. And then we can even right click on it again. So now it's a GPT. And now we have to specify um, partitioning. Right. So next, and now I can specify a volume size. So maybe I'll make this one 500 megabytes. I don't just for the heck of it. And assign it a drive letter. F sounds great. And then we can choose to format it. Now, the, we've done this with Linux a lot. So, uh, but in here in Windows, we have FAT, NTFS, and ReFS. No idea what ReFS is, but we've talked about the other three. So, which one do you want to make it? 
NTFS. Let's make it NTFS. You can perform a quick format, um, which I think if this already had data on it, it would just go through basically and remove the entries from the NTFS table. And that's all it does. It doesn't overwrite the data bits at all. Okay, next, finish. Great, so it shows up as volume F. I can right click on it, look at that again, awesome. Um, and I, I haven't done much here. If someone wants to take this on as part of their presentation, great. I haven't done any extending volume, shrink volume. Also, there was uh, like creating span volume, striped volume, mirror volume, grade five. That might be cool to look at, but I, I'm not planning on taking a look at it. So that was volume F. So if I come over here now, and you guys are probably laughing at me because I'm probably going, I might think of other ways to go here. But if I look at volume F and I go to properties, well, the next thing I want to do <coughs> is make this available for other clients to mount it, to be able to connect to this drive. So we need to share it. So as we kind of did similar to NFS when we went into Etsy exports and identified which um, volumes or which folder we were sharing, we need to do the same thing here. We're not using, we're not using NFS. Uh, we're gonna use a call, a, pro, a protocol called uh, SMB server message block. Um, and on the Linux side, we have a program called Samba, kind of derived from SMB, Samba, that uh, is going to be our client that's gonna be able to uh, connect and mount this uh, share. Now, this is a very common protocol. Um, it runs on port 445. Uh, and that's a very, if you were in the ethical hacking class, that's a very common port to hack. Samba has a lot of issues, a lot of vulnerabilities, I guess, and it's been hacked a lot over the years. But we're not talking about it from a security point of view. We just know it's a protocol we need to use. Okay, so um, one of the things I did, this is Windows Server 2019, I believe. Um, and I'm not actually sure if I had to do it, but I went into PowerShell and I enabled the file service, file serving role, something like that. Do you guys do that in the Windows class? Do you enable things with PowerShell or do you go to the wizard thingy? I could do it with the so I just, I haven't been over here. How do you even get to the wizard? Uh, enable, was it enable <coughs> manager features or something like that? Server manager, oh, there we are. Oh, sorry, let's see. I just want to go see what shows here on my, hmm. where does it say the roles that are installed? That'll be in manage. And then you click add roles and features and you could see different things oh. that are installed on the installation menu. I right. keep going. Yeah. Um, file and storage services. So whatever. I turned that on. I uh, so you could come here and you could go through this wizard, but it's it's a file server. Um and honestly, I don't know if you have to do it because I think that if you just come over to your properties here and you go to sharing and you click, like instead of sharing here, I think it'll automatically enable that, uh, that role, I think. I'm not Windows doer, but. Okay, so anyway, what I wanna do is for this particular uh, volume, I want to share that over my network. So I'm gonna come over here to advanced sharing and I'm gonna say share this folder and uh, share name, I guess we can give it something else like, um, I don't know, I'll call this uh, students. So if I look there, students, um, I don't know, I don't know where comments actually shows up. Limit the number of simultaneous users to 167,000, okay. I think that should be sufficient for our needs. Um, and let's let's just, I'm gonna start with that and then we'll come back here. There are some other things we're gonna have to set up. So I'm gonna go over to my client now. So I, I have 
various clients, 167,000 clients that want to connect to uh, this particular device. Uh, here we are. Uh, I need to come back to my EC2 dashboard. I've already spun up a Linux instance. I've called it Samba Client. I'm going to connect to it. SSH and hopefully that will be it. Okay, so over here I already did a sudo apt install smb client and it's already the newest version. So um, basically, <clears throat> hopefully it has my command circuit. I don't remember them. All right, so Here's the general commands that we use in order to connect to and scan that server uh, to see if it has um, any shares available to us. Now I know that that has changed since I was last here, the IP address at least. So I need to come back over here and look at my IP address of my Windows server machine. Um, there we are. I'm going to use a private address. So, client. These are on the same uh, VPC. Uh, they might even be in the same availability zone. I don't remember. And I'm just going to scan, see if I can scan that server. Ah, okay. So, first off, hey, timeout. Well, another thing we have to be aware of or make sure of is that we have the correct port open or security group open for us to connect. What port did I say we had have open? 445. So on my Windows server, so lame. Okay. <laughs> Stop it. So over here on this security group, I'm going to go check. I do have Samba open, but actually, I was trying to be a little bit more secure by not opening it to the entire world, but now I'm going to be lazy and just open it to the entire world. Hopefully no one hacks me. Um, the other thing, and this isn't really the cloud class, but if you're sick of your IP address changing every time you reboot, you can go and add a elastic IP address to your machine and that will keep the same IP address every time it reboots. It's fairly easy to do, so I'm not going to spend too much time. All right, let me switch back here to my terminal. And oh, cool. So I have a different prompt now when I scan that remote share. <clears throat> well, right now, it's saying, hey, you need, a, you need to put in a, a username and password. I can't show you anything. OK, so we have to configure some settings over on the Windows side. <coughs> We've got to. Um, in fact, the first thing I want to try, I'm just going to try this. I'm going to go to advanced sharing and permissions. It looks like everyone, in fact, I'm just going to say, give everyone full control and apply that. And share permissions are actually um, different than normal permissions. You guys talk about that on Windows at all? Windows class? They're two separate things. Um, I, I don't, I'm curious if that control C that. Okay, so that didn't do anything. I just wondered if I could browse it anonymously and probably there is a way, uh, but I don't know much about it. So let me, what I want to do is I'm going to add a new user and give that user privileges to connect to this share. So, I don't know, something like this. And yeah, I know there's a lot of other ways of adding uh, users. Uh, you know, you can get in, get off talking about Active Directory and all that stuff. And that's probably three semester sequence right there. So, so much stuff there. So I'll add a new user, uh, Steve-O. And put in some password. Uh, he can't change. Password never expires. Create. Close. Great. So I now have Stevo as a new user. I'm going to come back here to share permissions and I'm going to add, oops, 
zero over here, and he will have full control. And I'm sure in a class, you know, in an organization, you probably actually care about what permissions you gave some of these people, but <laughs> I'm just going to try to open it up on share permissions as well. Stevo, guess probably don't remember Stevo. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so he has full, full share permissions, full everything permissions. I'm going to come back here and oops, I don't want to connect to that. I want to connect as the user, Stevo, and one frame of dollar sign. Sweet. So now he can browse all the shares over there. Uh, and, and the main ones are movies, music, and students. Um, interestingly, it's interesting to note that the C drive is shared by default. What? The C drive is shared by default. I mean, I remember uh, when I first started doing this a long time ago, 15, 20 years ago, the C drive is shared by default. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can actually browse through the C drive and go to C slash whatever users and groups and, to, and you could, I totally could uh, to some remote users um, content. In fact, it was on a campus somewhere I was doing it. Because they had it wide open. And anyway, okay, so I can see the share. Well, my objective here is I want to be able to mount the share. Um, and that's my history. I don't remember the mount command. <laughs> All right. Um, we're gonna we're using the server message block protocol, which I might. I didn't actually have time to draft a set of slides for that, so it's possible I might still have uh, something I want to talk about, server message block. SIFS is kind of the next generation protocol, uh, common internet file system, I believe, that also will connect back to a Samba share, uh, SMB share. So um, you can kind of see my, my uh, commands here. So I'm going to try this again, sudo to mount my, oh, actually, let's make a, pseudo mkdir. I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, what did we call it? Students, right? All right. Pseudo mount minus t using sifs. My credentials, oh yeah. If I look over here at Etsy win credentials, oops, you'll see the, the username and the password I want to connect as. Now I need to change this to Tom, or no, it Stevo, so let me do that. Oops, Stevo. Okay, so now that's the username and password I want to connect with. Um, and in fact, it doesn't have to be that particular file. I think we can put it in any path because you can see in my mount command, we're gonna have to specify uh, where that credentials file is at anyways. Credentials equals Etsy win credentials. And I'm going to connect to, oh, now I need to remember what this was. That. Oops, too many. And uh, students. And it's going to show up at the mount point I just created, which was slash students. Oops, let's see if I type something wrong here. Um, it's mount minus T, did I miss something? Oh, minus O. So the options here that I'm using, try that one. Okay, it's, it shows it mounted it. So now as I do the DF command, looks like it's mounted. I can CD into slash students. Uh, it always, I, don't know why, but it always has that system volume information there by default. Let's see if I can create a file. And apparently, I, I don't have the right permissions. I, I can't. Not sure why. I can do a sudo, and it's fine. Uh, so, great. So it looks like I wrote it. Let's come over here. Uh, you can see that it did create that foo file over here, and there's the content in there. So I have successfully set up a shared 
uh, a win uh, so on the Windows file share, and I've connected to it with a Linux client. Um, the last thing I probably want to do, uh, well, I'd obviously want to figure out what these, how I could get a normal user maybe to, um, I don't know, let's try. Ubuntu, what if I, what if I, I'm just curious, Chon Ubuntu, Ubuntu to this student's directory. And do it recurs. Okay, whatever, can't do that. So now if I, if I wonder if it's owned by that user. Mm -hmm. Well, still didn't work. So why is it owned by root? Well, because it's a share, I don't know. Anyway, there must be a, a mount option somewhere that I'm missing that will let a, a regular or normal user write to it. I can only write to it if I'm pseudo, and I didn't spend much more time beyond that. But let's look at our F staff. <clears throat> so you can see, and I don't think there's any need to do it again, but you can see basically you put the, sh the Samba share name there and, and address. Uh, where the bound point here, we're using SIFs, my credentials file, where it's located. And I'm guessing maybe it's somewhere here in this options that I could specify, like a normal user might be able to write to it instead of pseudo. I don't know. That's, all right. Might be interesting if you want to figure that out. But that's what I wanted to show you. That was, uh, and then I recorded it, so I'm going to stop recording. I don't think I need to record much more than that. <coughs> mm, I stop recording.